This is Animals Gallery in Peebles where I live and um, those two paintings down the bottom here are mine, these two. Uh, this is a painting by a friend of mine called Hazel. Well, the painting is called Highland Queen. And there's mine and I've got another one that it's inside somewhere. So sometimes I'm very lucky I get to exhibit. So as I'm working, I'm thinking about the direction of my strokes, obviously, because the way this sky is working, a lot of these lines are coming out. You can see shapes anyway, that kind of follow this direction. And then we work around, around until we get to this horizontal that's here. And then this direction over here. So there's kind of like a central point here everything radiates out from. So I'm thinking about the direction I'm putting my brush marks down in. <clears throat> I'm also thinking about the subtleties of the colour and I'm remembering that this is a photograph and what I'm making is an artistic representation of a photograph so I can I can exaggerate the colours how I wish if I want to. I mean trying to get exact colours is something we try and teach you in school because you need to learn how to do that but sometimes it's appropriate to just to try and get the contrast to try and really maybe beef up some areas and let other areas be a little bit more falling away it's a difficult thing to explain that it's something that comes in time when you're painting but you can see i'm trying to get this this stronger area here and then what i want to do later is put pure white here this big white area here this is represented by this space at the moment I will put white into that, but obviously I'm going to have to go and wash that right out, make it pure white <clears throat> before I can do that. So I'm just working on everything else around about at the moment. Um, <clears throat> and it's very much, uh, what's the word? Spontaneous is a kind of word I'm looking for. I'm also looking for a word which describes when you just react to something with your uh, with your heart rather than your mind. I don't know. Like you look at it and you think, "All oh, right, okay, that needs that. That needs that." It's a very difficult thing to teach. I'm just going to try and get this area here a bit lighter. I mean, leave that tiny little dark bit.
So it's important when you're painting to be really focused. This is why this is because it can be a little bit tetchy when kids are chatting away and painting because <coughs> excuse me why? Because when you're painting, if you're trying to paint in a serious fashion, if you're trying to get the very best you can out of yourself, if you're trying to push yourself and create something to be proud of that you never thought you could achieve, you know, you have to be reevaluating everything you're doing all the time. Like I'm I'm constantly looking at these colours and thinking, what do I need to add there? That those peachy shapes need a bit more strength to them so I need to go and get some peach and maybe put a touch of yellow in it to strengthen it up a bit capture that golden that's a bit better and then I'm thinking that same peachy color where else could I put it around about here so I think that same peachy color can be seen in here so I'm just gonna layer a little bit over here to try and knit this whole area together a bit better so my mind is constantly evaluating colour, colour values, contrast between dark and light, uh, shape, mark making. I'm now looking at the area in between these peachy bits, which is a slightly lilac -y blue, which I have here anyway. But I'm thinking that in my head, I'm thinking this is too stark against that. It needs to be softened up a bit. So I'm thinking, okay, I need to get a little bit more of my something lavenderishy, a kind of blue, a bluey purpley grey kind of colour, and I want to work that around the edge of this if I can. And of course, when you put it down, it's like, oh, is that going to work? It might not work. If it doesn't work, it's not a failure. What it is, is a learning process. So you go back and you either thicken up the paint if it's too thin, or you, you add in a slightly different amount of something else. It's not to do with being wrong or being right. It's to do with reacting to what you're seeing here, what is appearing here, and asking yourself, mm, am I happy with that? What else do I want to do? Is that like this is a bit strong for me right now? I'm thinking, oh, it's getting a little bit too. I don't really want it quite as bright as that. So I'm just going to dry my brush and my apron. That's what I do quite often, which is why my apron looks like this. <laughs> um, dry my brush and my apron and just see if I can soften that edge between those areas and see if I can work that in around here a bit with a sort of dry brush, is that going to create what I want? Now these are too round looking for me, so I want to just streak a bit of that purple into it to take away that softness of the edge of that shape. So this is what I mean when I say to you guys, you can't talk about other stuff <clears throat> when you're painting, you just can't. There's no way that if my daughter came in right now and started talking to me about what we're doing tonight and what time we're we going out and so on. I'd have to stop painting and then talk to her and then go back to this because my brain needs to be locked in. And if you want to learn to become an effective painter and you want to get an A at National Five, which I know a lot of you could do, and then you want to go on and get a good hire, you know? And then if you want to go on from there, and go to art college, then you've got to start listening to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for my darkest tones. OK, now this is something we've probably talked to you about before. Depends on what you've done in the department. If not, then that's fine. You can listen and you can learn from it. Um, I don't have any black in my set. I've got my burnt umber and my Payne's Grey. So I've got two dark tones here. I've also got ultramarine. So these and this together is going to create me the, the kind of tone I need. Because if I look in here, there isn't actually any jet black in there. The darkest bit is probably right there where my paintbrush handle is. Maybe in here as well, in these gaps between the rocks. So that's where I'm going to go in first. And then I'm going to start taking that dark tone and popping it in other places. Um, 
in other places that are perhaps not quite as jet dark, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten them up a bit after. I just want to try and get a bit of structure. Okay, so if I move best place to put this, let's think. If I just do that there, and I'll just work on this bit, and this can all come after. All right, so getting my Payne's grey and my uh, burnt umber, a bit of the blue, and then work it together. Okay, that's going to give me quite a dark tone. Now, some of you may need a bit of black. I mean, if I had a black in the room, I don't, but if I had a black in the room, I might put the tiniest black in for here. Um, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to work with this. If you think you need a bit of black to make it really super dark, then you can, but this should come up quite nice and dark. All right, so where are we going in here? Look at the direction. Jaggy shape up, jaggy shape that way, coming down and around. I'm going to pop a few little dark bits around the edge here. Maybe over here where I see lots of darkness amongst the rocks. This is all going to be layered around and over. But what I'm trying to seek out is where I see the darkest areas here and then just popping in. Look at how I'm using my brush. I've got a flat brush. I can pull it that way to create. Um, can you see that? I can put it that way to create a wide line. I can create uh, a thin line going that way. Okay, look what I can do with that brush. So as I've been working the last 10 minutes, it's becoming more and more apparent that I need to start getting some C in so that the rocks can make sense. You'll have maybe noticed that I was changing the shape of some of these bits. This is what I mean about how it's not about, oh, I've got that wrong. It's a mistake. Like two add two equals five. That's a mistake. It's not like that. It's kind of like, oh, right, that bit needs to come over a bit. So what I'm going to do is just paint a bit more over this way. And then I was noticing when I was coming up to these bits of rocks here that I had to bring a bit more out. So it makes sense to start putting in some of this now, some of the water so that I can um, I can knit the two together as, a, as an entirety rather than just as separate things. Uh, so although I'm gonna put more texture into these rocks, this, this is not finished. It's a little bit like the sky. This is like a kind of first layer over and all, all the time when I'm doing this I'm constantly constantly looking like this left right left right left right and when I do that I can see oh that's a little bit curved it needs to be straighter that's actually in the wrong place like I put some grass here and then I realized oh, I've put the grass completely in the wrong place because that is this area here and the grass is actually down here. So that's this bit. This is where it's all gone a bit wrong because my composition is slightly wrong. So I put the grass in the wrong place. So that's OK. I just painted over my grass with some grey and then I'll just layer that up and I put the grass in the right place here where I think it should be kind of linking onto this swoop. There's a swoop. There's grass here and then a swoop down. Depends what you see when you look at an image. When I look at the image, that's what I see. Grass here and a swoop. So I've got my grass here and this is gonna be the swoop coming down, although this needs to probably come up a bit slightly, this gray, so that I can get that angle right. But it's all about process and about um, episodes in the painting you know this is episode two or whatever and there's going to come to episode 10 eventually you know you're just layering and working and laying and working 
Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of work around here now, uh, but I need to wash everything first. So I'm going in looking at the purest white areas and this tiny little bit of blue, the little bits of blue, what I'm doing is I'm leaving brown page for them. So it's a little bit like a sort of network of white, those little brown bits in between. So, I mean the brown bits, they're not going to be identical to the same shape as the, the blue. I'm just trying to leave areas so I can get some blue in there after or whatever it is it's more like a sort of yellowy greeny bluey turquoisey bit of brown it's an awful lot of color in there I'm putting this pure white in means I can do things like go up here there's a skinny kind of white going on down there which then creeps in there. Now this is quite quite um vague and a little bit chunky but you know, it's, a, it's like I say, it's like a, a base and I can go into it later with a, a tinier brush if I want to get more detail. See, I've picked myself up a smaller brush to do this. Now, there's a lot of rocks here that I've not popped in yet. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's think. Um, this is what I mean about thinking. <laughs> mm, I'm going to leave little bits of brown paper to show where there are some rocks just coming out the edge here. So there's a lot of just dabbing the brush down, leaving spaces. Very strong bit of water here. There's obviously a little bay over here. So a little bit of pure white in there for this tiny bit. And I can sharpen up around the edge and so on later on. Okay, I'm going to time lapse it a bit now. So this is where I'm at at the moment. Um, just for clarification, I wouldn't normally paint half a picture like this. Um, you know, it's, I've got this I've got this over the top so that we can see this and this at the same time, nice and clearly. Normally, I would work like get the rocks, get these rocks, get these rocks, you know, and then the water all as a one. You know, but um, I'm doing it in such a way so that you can see the photograph clearly um, and nice and big at the same time as the painting. So I'm going to move on and um, try and do a bit more and I'm going to try and see if I can get a bit more detail in now. So starting to lay over, this is all dry, it only takes a few minutes to dry and I'm going to sort of work up some thicker paint, smaller brushes and see if I can get some more detailed texture in.
There we go. So you can see a little bit more detail coming in now into the waves. Lots of different tones of greens and blues and try and get some pure white over there, although it's a bit tricky. Um, and you can see shadows being cast underneath the rocks. I've tried to add in little, what I would call a wash. Now, I haven't really shown you this very much, but water, watered down paint. So getting yourself a darker tone and then quite sort of waterily putting it underneath areas to try and get this kind of shadowy effect. Um, if you look at the base of that rock there, there's shadow, you know, underneath here. It's quite dark and shadowy. So underneath the base of my rock, I've just washed a bit of greyishy, brownishy tone over the top, very thin of what I had there already to try and create that illusion. Yeah, so there we go. That's what's going on right now. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. I've done about four hours so far, so I'm not sure I've got much more time now. So here's the painting as it stands at the moment. I've done a few hours this weekend and I don't have any more time to do any more before your next lesson third year. So I'm kind of hoping we can just spend a moment, if we've got any more patience, to look at this and just like play spot the difference. You know, if you look at what I've done so far, there's a lot of similarities, but there's a few differences. And I think the overwhelming difference between what's going on here, um, here and here, is this just seems so much darker, doesn't it? If you look at the contrast, there's a lot more darkness here and there's a lot more lightness here. So the next thing I'll do is I'll start to work into this, get some more dark tones going over the top try and get these rocks in and get the rest of the sea in. Um, but I'm quite happy with that so far. And hopefully it's taught you a few things about patience and about timing. And actually it's taught me a lot this weekend about how much pleasure can be derived from just sitting and just working on something over a little while. It's been a few, quite a few weeks since I've actually sat and painted for four hours on a day and um, it's made me realise it's so much more good for the soul than deciding about the next chore to do. <laughs> but you're not parents so you won't be getting that yet but one day you'll get it. Anyway there we go I'll see if I can work into this next week.